I thought uh, this would be the first time uh, the human race would be able to extinguish itself. And uh, I, I wasn't worried because uh, I knew that the U.S. and Russia wouldn't, uh, wouldn't attack each other. In 1952, I was a junior in high school. It was a kind of a conversation, but more by the teachers than the students, because we were too busy having a good time. We were sheltered, very sheltered. We read the newspapers, news forecasts, uh, reports, but um, I don't remember. I, I, don't, I suppose it was ignorance. I was not. Uh, I didn't know enough to be afraid. You also have to realize news was something that did not happen like today. Right. This happened so boom. Fifteen minutes was your news coverage. Or you went home and you turned your radio on. You listened to Gabriel Peter. Yeah. Remember him? Yeah. I was glad the war was over. You know, people were getting killed, and uh, it's a good thing. War is not good. Take that one. Well, again, uh, I personally was overwhelmed when the class of '50 at West Point was wiped out. Uh, I had dated a West Point cadet, knew a number of people in that class, and uh, and and that hit home. When, when they were lost. Uh, but as far as North and South Korea, it, the political confrontation, I didn't like it. It didn't affect me at all. It was just, yeah. It affected me in the sense my brother was in the Navy during that period of time and sat on a destroyer tender. He was not in danger. But uh, six months of the year off the United States goes and six months of the year off the United States. Japanese coast, not Korean. I was worried about him more than yeah. I was concerned about what was going on. Well, I, I share that. My brother was a Navy jet pilot, and he was over in that part of the world too. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he was patrolling, and that, that, but that was as, as close as I got to uh, Korea. Girls were affected in the sense that uh, there were so few boys around. They were in the military. They wound up when it was time to get married, marrying much younger men. My sister-in-law is seven years older than my brother. Everybody was very happy. He was a terrible dictator, and they were glad he was gone. It's still the same. I think McCarthy, it's been proven that he was wrong, and uh, I thought that at that time, too. It meant a great deal, because I remember when I was growing up, Everyone was afraid of getting polio. Uh, there was a season when you got it, and uh, in the apartment building I lived in, there were several other people that got polio, and some were paralyzed. Would be liberation. Didn't have to worry about my daughter getting polio, mm -hmm. yeah. which my generation, I had four friends that got polio. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a scourge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King. Yeah. Um, our thoughts on the time. I lived in Virginia at the time, and there had been segregation there earlier. Um, I remember growing up as a kid, seeing water fountains for blacks and water fountains for whites and separate lunchrooms. Uh, and it, uh, I, 
I was there, I was conscious of the civil rights movement, I was not mature enough to really appreciate what was happening, but I was certainly aware, and of course now in retrospect it was magnificent uh, what Martin Luther King did. Um, and in fact, we have people here at Woodland Pond who participated in the march in, in Washington, and I think someone in Selma also. Um, I hate, was it? Who was? That's Betsy Hate's husband. Yeah. And he's a clergyman. And I'm married to an Episcopal priest. Yeah. And he got involved. That was not the 50s. That was in the late 60s. 60s. And the, the, with these street fights in Patterson, New Jersey, between the uh, Puerto Ricans and the blacks. Yeah. And uh, he would go out in the streets in his clergy uniform with a hard hat on because they were throwing bricks. Mm. Mm. But it was a, uh, it was so old, and Rosa Parks, and uh, it just there was, a, there was a terrible situation that existed in this country with the segregation. Now we look back on it with a completely different viewpoint. But in those days, that was the way, that's what it was. That's the way it was. And, uh, and I think. You sort of become aware of these things and say, yeah, that's the right thing to do. After the fact, you know, too young to be a mover and shaker, at least I might not go out of but uh, certainly an interesting observer. Well, I like both men, Eisenhower and Truman. Uh, I liked Eisenhower for his famous statement uh, that we should watch out for the military-industrial complex. And I think that Truman was one of the best presidents we ever had. Yeah, I, I thought he, would, he did a great job. Not only as a general, but I, I thought he did a great job as president. How about you? Did you have well, any the complaints? first, all I remember about that is coming home from college, and it was my first opportunity to vote. Mm -hmm. That was a big deal. A big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least in our generation. I hope the young people feel that way or not today. Back then, it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I voted for him. Yes, I do. And, uh, the space race was very important because this, this was a Cold War between the U.S. and Russia. And uh, being able to launch these rockets, etc., uh, led the technologies that, you know, we use now. The missiles mm -hmm. develop. were developed. And, uh, I remember that in the United States, right after Sputnik was launched, they had a program, they, uh, uh, people from uh, universities like MIT came up with textbooks to be used in colleges. Mm -hmm. They did this in less than a year, how to design rockets and, and all these things. And, uh, I think what helped us a lot was the uh, the veterans from World War II were able to get free college. Yeah. So we had a lot of college graduates in the U.S. at the time. We had a lot of engineers mm -hmm. who could design what was needed in the space race. I sure remember Sputnik. Everybody remembers Sputnik. Oh, that was oh, wake up, get busy. Uh, I wondered if we had the the uh, technical resources to carry back Sputnik, and very quickly I learned that we did. I think we did a magnificent job quick reacting to Sputnik.
Well, I remember uh, Cuba uh, when the uh, the Russian we spotted the missiles missile launching sites in Cuba, mm -hmm. and the Russians were sending ships in, which we thought had the missiles on them, and we we blockaded Cuba. And we told them it would be war, if, you know. Mm -hmm. If these ships proceeded, then the ships backed down because the Russians knew that we were stronger than they were. Well, again, that, that missile confrontation was the, the thing that brought it to my attention. I was not conscious of the, the Cubans uh, emigrating to Florida. I, that was just not in my realm of consciousness. Uh, but the, when the uh, JFK was down there in the White House worrying about these missiles, whether this was going to, they were close enough to make the United States big time, and this could have been a, a very serious standoff between the Russians and the, and the you know, United States. Uh, so that was a that was a lucky break. Yes. I don't think it helped or hindered him, but uh, I, as far as I was concerned, he lost it because uh, even though the R Russians saw him, five days before the Russian leaders met with another American, his name was Di David Rockefeller, so evidently the Russians knew who, who was the important person to speak to. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't Nixon. I think more and more people were capable of affording TVs. Just that alone, being able to keep up with the world, the socialization became so important in people's lives. Uh, and again, I want to say birth control. That was a big deal. <laughs> it changed a lot of uh, human behavior and a lot of uh, cultural rules. Um, I, I think, yeah, I, I think that should be hailed as one of the major events of that time. Uh, you just don't know how hard it was uh, without some form of birth control. Well, I noticed what was going on. Uh, uh, they were building all these houses, you know, mm -hmm. in the suburbs. And... Uh, I remember I went to the uh, 1939 World's Fair and General Motors had a, their own uh, building and uh, you would sit in chairs and you would be moving around and uh, you would see uh, suburban neighborhoods, you know, with highways. And uh, in those days, all the towns were connected by trolley cars. You could take a trolley car to go from here to there. You didn't need a car. So General Motors and uh, I believe also General Electric bought up all these uh, trolley cars and they, uh, they shipped them to South America. And uh, now Americans needed cars and they lived in suburbs. Need the cost to travel, yeah. and uh, of course General Motors makes the cars, and uh, General Electric makes the refrigerators that you need in these houses, etc., and all the other appliances. <laughs>